Hello guys, we are going to be doing another reaction video to, I think, a Meadow-based live book called Fables from a Den. Hold right mouse button and drag to pan around. Okay. Okay, this is cool. This is pretty nice. Fables from the Den, a living book by my delight. Okay, this is cool. Let's go. Oh, this is cool. This is so cool. Oh my goodness, Ina! Ina! Our bear friend! Um, froggy, bunny, okay. Oh my goodness. Can I- what can we click on? I'm, I'm gonna click on you. Hello? You might be known for being solitary creatures, but life alone is never easy. Um... Oh. Oh, each of these characters is a story. In a clearing deep in the woods, populated by a herd of four-legged furlongs and a solitary deer, a little removed from the group. You see, he was ignored and overlooked because he was mocked for his appearance. Oh, he doesn't have big horns! And he has non-ghostly eyes. <laughs> You see, he was ignored and overlooked because he was mocked for his appearance. Whilst the other animals had large and bullish horns, his was smaller and doomer. His life was lonely and bereft of love. And his ears were down, too. I, and, this is sad already. Oh, the fang deer from um, season two of when we were finding collectibles. On the far side of the rich green thicket lived another deer. She bore the front of taunts and mean remarks because of her remarkable tusks. So unique they were that the other animals cast envious glances in her direction whenever she walked by. This was difficult for her because she wanted nothing more than to fit in. Her life was lonely and bereft of love. Become friends. Be forced together. While separated by a sprawling landscape of woodland, they're however connected by a river bed. Call it luck or destiny, but on the same day, both decided to escape the weight of rejection. They made their way inland to the body of water and caught sight of each other from across their banks. They looked eyes, and in that instant, captured each other's hearts. So is the one on the left a boy, and the one on the right a girl? Oh, I see where this is going. You see, what others disliked about them, they loved about each other. It gave them strength and made them whole. Their lives were no longer lonely and bereft of love. So, just because you're different doesn't mean bad things, okay. Ina, you gave us a good story. Learn to love your imperfections. I'm happy for them. Star cross lovers. They're saying things! Hey you, pheasant. You probably are friends with the first one that I ever caught. But I'm gonna go with a bear next. Because you look like my bear friend! Yeah! Okay. Hear the one about the wolf and the rabbit? Sure, I'll do that. Okay. Mm hmm. Yes. Might and Delight made some really cool books. And this is also only for a few dollars. Like the Lonesome Fog book. There once lived a rabbit behind a waterfall. We've seen it! Tiny in stature, but big of heart. Many had tried, but all had failed to unseat him behind his watery veil. Oh, that's sad. No one really knew why until a big, bold wolf sought to try her luck. She marched towards the waterfall, brash and loud with thoughts of victory. But came squaring back, scared and broken with tales of a large and fearsome beast. Her friends heckled and laughed at her misfortune. Unknown to her, the rabbit had mastered a trick. Less a trick, but more a realization. Using cunning and trickery, he was able to make herself bigger and louder. He had embraced his inner strength to become the beast that other animals feared. You look nothing more than a giant deer. Um, okay. And wolf, you're friends with a squirrel. Let's go back for a second. You're friends with a squirrel, a badger, and a mouse. 
Okay, sure, yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's okay, though. We still have so many things to try, though. This is so cool. We still have one, two, three. Oh, talk about unleashing your enemies. Smart trick. I love this story. You're a bunny rabbit. Fish. Are you the bunny rabbit? You're living behind a waterfall. Can I click the waterfall? No. Okay, um, you still have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more things to try. And it's been five minutes with these. This might be a little bit of a longer episode. Oh my goodness, I can make your eyes move. Okay, that's cool. Oh, hi! Hello? I can make your eyes move. Okay. Fish, why are you looking at me like that? Uh-uh, that's not nice. Bunny rabbit. Are you scared of me? You have that face when you, that you look scared of me. You're scared of everything. See, you're just looking around, being like... <gasps> Fox, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with you next. We've always of you always looking for a place to lay your head. Here's a short story about a snail. Okay. I'll take one. I'll take that story. Once upon a time, the end. <laughs> That's my snail story. A young snail, swiggly and sloth long for a home of her own. Everyone around her places they turn to for shelter. So why didn't she have one? I deserve one, even if I have to try and build one myself, she proclaimed. Yes, every, every animal deserves one. And try she did, day and night, and with no sleep until she could do no more. See, she lacked hands and her tentacles were made for hard labor. Distraught and exhausted, she curled up and fell asleep with dreams of her home on her mind. Oh no, this is sad. <gasps> Foxy, Foxy, you came to save the day. You came to the day. Yay. She woke up with a jolt short time later with the weight on her new robust shoulders. To discover her home she had longed for was with her. Or more accurately, was on her all along. Her shell. Her shell. Bro. Snail woman. You. But wait. Her shell was tiny before. It was literally like tiny. Go back. Th there, it's tiny. We go back. Okay, sure, yeah, um, fine. That make that totally makes sense. I get it. I mean, yeah, but home really is where the heart is. Home sweet home. Good story. Yes, Fox. Good story. My home is on me. A roof. <laughs> okay. Dear, you're up next. Here's one to rumble over. Ever wondered why the lynx had no tail? It's actually pretty amusing depending on which side of the tail you're on. Oh no! Oh, you poor- Wait a second, it's like opposite. The lynx made a story about the deer and the deer is making a story about the lynx. Whoa. Yeah, okay. Um, this is a long time ago in a small, idyllic corner of the woods lived a, re lived a reclusive fish. You know, one of those that loves to be left alone. On the other end of the scale lived a lynx. Now, if there's one animal that appreciates quality alone time, it would be the lynx. Oh no, not this one. The four-legged pest. <gasps> Oh. How? Oh, no. Oh. The four legged lynx, not pest, okay, took it upon himself to bother the fish at every opportunity by throwing pebbles into the pond. Simply because he could and hoped to get a reaction, one day he did. Just be nice, lynx. 
After another day trying and failing to get a rise from the fish, the lynx fell asleep by the pond, with his tail in the water. The fish, seeing his chance, <gasps> lunged forward and bit the hairy razor's tufty long tail. <gasps> oh no, that's sad though. So that is why the lynx only had a stump where the tail used to be. Tell we can get all behind. Heel to the fish. How horrid. Yes, Lynx. How horrid. The fish is happy, yes. But the Lynx is just like, how horrid. Yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. Bunny Rabbit, what do you have to say? What do you have to tell? I don't know how some are never satisfied with what they had. It reminds me of an old foggy I used to know. Okay. Let's see your story. Dear, I am unimpressed. <gasps> a badger! Yes! There once lived a badger from Shelter One. <laughs> a more conceited and vain creature you will never see. He loved his looks, but loved having what others did much more. Okay, I don't like you already. On one of his little saunters in the woods, he came across the biggest and juiciest radish he had ever seen. I bet no one has had one as big as that before, he thought, before picking it up and probably marching towards the river with it. As he walked by the brookside, he caught sight of his reflection in another badger, which looked like a bigger and juiciest radish in its mouth. Outraged, he lunged at his reflection, dropping the radish into the watery depths. Oh, you. Soaking wet, and as the cost of his actions began to see again, he began to make his way home with nothing to show from his walk other than a loss of pride and acknowledgement of his greed. These are pretty short. But they are fables from the den, yes. Be happy with what you have. That's unfortunate. I love radishes. <laughs> Okay, fish, I'm going with you next. You have the derpiest face ever. It might be hard to see, little cousins, but ever wondered why the spider hates the fly? Oh, fly, you. Oh, fly, what have you done? What have you done? It's a short tale, but a long time ago, a spider was head over fins in love with a dainty little fly. Despite his best efforts, he was unable to get the fly to turn his wayward affections. Oh no, this is sad, huh? Oh no. Fly, you're mean. Just be nice, be nice. Things came to a head one day when the fly flew a drop of water over the spider, which made him understandably upset. Uh huh. Okay. From that day onward, spiders far and wide have a love-hate relationship with flies everywhere. Fly, you're mean. Wait, where would the, where's the spider, though? Things you do for love. Poor spider. How interesting. Bonnie, how... You would say, how interesting. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Sure. Okay, let's see this one, the pheasant. I may be small, but that should never stop you from showing your strength. Here's a short story explaining why. A bear cub and her father had just awoken from their winter slumber and stepped out of their cave for a relaxing stroll. And suddenly, when stopping, stepping on a thin sheet of ice, slipped and plunged into a frustratingly deep crevice. Struggling to get out, the father suggested they wail as high as they couldn't hope for a nearby large animal might come to their aid. Just try, 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 and try again. Oh no, that's sad though. They have stubs. <laughs> However, the little cub turned to her father and said, No! 
we should call out to the tiniest bird down the sky of this deep hole, and I was confused, but decided to follow his daughter's lead. Okay, sure. Shortly after calling for help, a little birdie turned up. She flapped around, made a few noises, and shortly afterwards was followed by a band of smaller animals. Okay. Take a very helpful group lifted the bear cub and her father from the hole and onto sturdier land. Yes! So the bird came to go get the snake, which came to go get the lynx, and then the snake called around the lynx so that the lynx wouldn't fall, and two, and then this, the lynx got the turtle, and then the turtle was helping. The turtle got the, I honestly don't know what that is, and then that got the frog to help them, and then the bear, the big bear was just like, let's get the big one so that they can lift us out. But the lynx probably wouldn't have been able to reach. The small bear cup daughter, on the other hand, was just like, get the smallest animal that can tell everyone else, even though. Because they can fly. It showed what could be achieved when groups work together to achieve a common goal. Yes. Okay, yes. Um, we have two more stories. Strength comes from solitary. Small but fierce. Feeling quite... I, I, I forgot, Bunny, what did you say? I don't remember. I like how they, like, say things about it. I'm a firm believer in having faith. Got a story about one such instance I'd love to share. Yes, Frog, go ahead. Grape caught one of your friends, but... Um, okay. There was once a young fox who saw no limits to what she could do. She watched the frogs bound and leap around joyfully and tried to do the same. No matter how high she jumped, she never could quite scale the heights achieved by frogs. She asked the strongest frog to reveal the secrets of their jumping ability. The frog laughed and simply said, You are born with this gift. No other animals can do what we do. Untrue, but it's not true. She's jumping on a lily pad. Isn't she going to sink? Um, I am concerned. Sad and a little confused, the young fox pondered the frog's words for a long time. She'd always overcome every obstacle and saw no reason why she couldn't prevail over this challenge, despite not being a frog. Peering over the lake, she reflected over her flight and jumped into the reflection of a large pale moon. Oh no, what are you gonna- that's not a lily pad? Some time passed and the frogs, wondering why they hadn't seen the young fox for a while, looked to the sky in amazement. One of the frogs proclaimed, it looks like she jumped the highest after all. Even the sky was no limit to what she could achieve. Just goes to show that sometimes you need to take a leap of faith. Yes, she jumped to the moon. She's on the moon. Yes, yes. But what happened to her afterwards? Did she drown? And that's why she's on the moon. Yeah, let's not think about that. That's sad. Um, <laughs> Snail, snail, you're the last one. Now that would be a beautiful sight. Huge leap of faith. That's beautiful. Yes, Fox, that sure is beautiful. I've got a tale about simply being yourself. Yes, little snail, yes. I heard from this leafy friend about a goat who lived to the fullest at his own pace. While I flashed from many of his furry friends, he approached things a little bit more leisurely. So there's a bee, there's the goat, there's a bird, um, I think that's a squirrel, and then a bear. He was a very funny goat, but few knew this because he was a slow talker. One day while selling one of his witty sagas, the gathered animals fell asleep before he reached the end. Oh, you poor goat. Oh, goat. Disheartened, he was about to make a slow walk home 
when he heard a chorus of hearty laughs coming from the trees and bushes. That was a fantastic story, said the tree. Trees talk. Things changed from that day onwards. The goat never felt alone again, since he knew he had a lot of friends to speak to. It just goes to show that there are people out there who appreciate you for who you are. So that was the last story. Um, yeah. Don't know why I was talking like that, but it's cool. Absolutely barking. Tremendous story. Whoa, great friends. Yes, Lynx. Yes. I'm gonna just call you Ina because yes, why not? Dear, your story was definitely 100% the worst. Like, what? Like, uh. Is there any other stories? Or, yeah, let's just look around for a little bit and just see. Um. Hmm. I don't see anything. Are there more stories for me to me all? Oh, no, that's not it. Okay, um. I think that that was the last story, so. As said, this only goes for a few dollars. It is a Might in the Light live book, and it is great. If you haven't seen my Lonesome Fuck video yet, not the Lonesome Fuck from the game, but the Living Fuck, quite like Fables from the Den by My Light, it is about Ina's little life, and we actually figure out the name of the mother of Ina's mother, but I will leave that to you to figure out. I don't know why I'm talking like this. I mean, like, yeah, sure, it's fine, but, like, hmm. I'm just gonna go play the credits, and then we'll end the episode. Just give you some time to read.